Thank you, Sarah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, and thank you for everyone for joining us, and a special thanks to Sarah for kicking us off from the ACLU. I also saw Mo Sinna here. Uh, Mo, great to see you as well, and thank you for welcoming us. There are quite a few people here who I would like uh, to recognize, starting with, uh, in person, some of the legislature's um, legislative sponsors, rather. Uh, first and foremost, I, I'm going to have a hard time saying former, but I will say it, even though forever and always a senator, Loretta Weinberg. <laughs> she, she is smiling, she just said, and she, I told her she looks more relaxed already. Uh, likewise, former assemblywoman, uh, a, another great leader in this, Valerie Venary Huddle. Valerie. We also have with us Senate President Nick Scuteri. Nick, great to have you with us. Senator, I lost him, Gordon Johnson. First time I've been able to say that. So, Gordon, congratulations. Senator Linda Greenstein is with us. Linda, great to have you. Assemblywoman and Chair Myla Jacy is in the House. Myla, great to see you. Uh, we have new Assembly members, Shama Haider and Ellen Park are with us, also from the 37th. I'm told Raj Mukherjee is coming. I don't see him, though but I want to give him a shout out. I want to give our administration a shout out. Judy Persichelli, the woman who actually does not need any introduction. Uh, Commissioner of the Department of Health, Sarah Edelman, the acting commissioner in the Department of uh, Human Services. My extraordinary partner in government, the one, the only, the singular Lieutenant Governor Sheila Y. Oliver is in the house. Bergen Commissioner Tracy Zor is here. Tracy, great to have you. And Thank Bergen County and Teaneck both for hosting us so graciously today. Members of the Thrive Coalition, thank you for all of your great work. And it is a particular treat to welcome to New Jersey the National President and CEO of Planned Parenthood Federation of America, Alexis McGill Johnson. I'm also I will pay a big price if I do not acknowledge the fact that the great first lady of the great state of New Jersey, Tammy Murphy, is in the house with us. I have not found her, but I also want to recognize my senior deputy chief counsel, Kate McDonald. Kate, where are you? Kate? I'm not sure where she is, but she deserves a shout out. Um, she put a, as Loretta knows, I think almost uh, uniquely, she put a tremendous amount of work into getting both of these pieces of legislation over the finish line. I thank Kate. I also thank in absentia to our chief of staff, George Helmy, and the many other staff members who uh, were so uh, extraordinary uh, in getting us to today. Before we dive in as to why we're here, COVID is still with us, but I, but Judy's a little bit of good news, a little bit of good news. So 20 thousand three hundred and something new cases that's not good news another unfathomable day of loss of life 117 confirmed deaths today but our hospitalizations have begun to go down a little bit they're now at 5,933 they have been over 6,000 for several days 827 people went in yesterday but importantly 915 walked out uh, the spot positivity rate is still over 30 percent but the rate of transmission has started to come down. I think that's a little bit of early signs of hopefully some, some better moments and better days. With that being said, in a few moments, I will sign into state law the assurance that every generation of New Jerseyans will have the right to bodily autonomy and the right to decide whether and when to become a parent, no matter in which direction the political winds may blow. So there's two pieces of legislation. Yeah, amen. Senate Bill 49 slash Assembly 6260, the sponsors, many of whom are here today, as I mentioned, Loretta and Linda in the Senate, Valerie, Myla, and Raj Mukherjee in the Assembly. But I also want to give a shout out to Vin Gopal, who is one of the sponsors, and especially to Senate, yeah, and to former Senate President Steve Sweeney, uh, who led on this and led on so much else, and we wish him the very best. And I take him on his word that we've not seen the last of Steve. Um, our state's recognition of reproductive rights has stood for four decades on a foundation built solely of prior court rulings. But the United States Supreme Court in prepare, is preparing to take a wrecking ball 
to its own precedent, Roe v. Wade, and that would also demolish our case law-based foundation here in New Jersey. Neither I nor those with me today can let that happen. And now, once I sign this bill, regardless of whether or not the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade, New Jersey's position in supporting the right to reproductive autonomy will remain clear and unchanged. Moreover, this law clears a pathway to ensure that the cost of reproductive health services is no longer a barrier for those who need them. And in addition, and I want to thank the sponsors of a separate bill, in absentia, Senator Shirley Turner and Teresa Ruiz, the new majority leader in the Senate, as well as Valerie again, Myla, and Raj in the Assembly, I am also signing a second piece of legislation, inextricably, I might add, linked to the first, S413A4698, which expands access to and the affordability of birth control medication. Together, these two pieces of legislation will serve to protect access to time-sensitive care and prioritize the health and well-being of people who need reproductive health care. These two achievements were made possible, as I mentioned, through the collective effort of a great number of people. But I want to especially single out two individuals, each of whom hung up their legislative spikes over the past several days. First and foremost, former Senator Loretta Weinberg, whose legacy of public service, amen. Amen. Whose legacy of public service has spanned decades and who is without a doubt one of the most consequential legislators in our state's history. Loretta, the passage of this legislation is due in great part to your unparalleled leadership and is a capstone achievement of your extraordinary legislative career. We thank you for your guidance and leadership on this journey and on so many others and are incredibly grateful for the doors you have opened wide and the bars that you have set high as a legislator. God bless you. And I must also again acknowledge former Assemblywoman Valerie Venary Huddle, who fought with equal vigor for the rights of women across a tremendous, again, another double-digit de year legislative tenure. For all you have done, Valerie, thank you. <laughs> to the advocates, and there are more than a few with us today, who have made it their life's work to expand and ensure reproductive rights for every New Jerseyan, Today was made possible through your dedication, your foresight, and your sheer force of will. While others, and I might add even other pro-choice individuals, rested, content that Roe v. Wade was the law of the land, you persisted. Because of the decades of groundwork that you laid, we have expanded access to necessary reproductive health services in a way that cannot be easily dismantled by more conservative administrations. We've expanded access. Amen. I think I finally found Kate. If you were standing there the whole time, I apologize. Kate McDonald in the background. Through your efforts, we've expanded access to and affordability of birth control. And we have protected the reproductive autonomy of all future generations of New Jerseyans. May, make no mistake, as always, there is still work to be done. I have faith that your commitment to better access and equity will further expand these rights to protect, represent, and include all New Jerseyans. To those on the other side of this issue, and there are many overwhelmingly well-intentioned people, many of whom, by the way, have reached out to me directly, I hope that we can come together in the greater calling of our faiths to make parenthood an easier, safer, and healthier choice for anyone or any family in search of support. We can hold, we can each hold our own personal, deeply felt views and still respect each individual's ability to make their own decisions. Last week, Reverend Pat Conroy, a Jesuit priest who served as chaplain for the House of Representatives for 10 years, spoke to the Washington Post about being pro-choice and Catholic as I am. And he said, and I quote Father Conroy, a good Catholic in our system could be saying, given women in our system have this constitutional right, our task as fellow Christians or as Catholics is to make it possible for her to optimize her ability to make the choice. My own journey and evolution on this, easy, uh, on this issue has not been easy, 
and is one that through great reflection has landed on ultimate respect and trust for others. Respect especially for those with limited means for whom restrictions on access to reproductive health care has the most devastating effect and trust that each of us is our own best judge and advisor. To be sure, I have leaned on my faith to inform and enhance many of my most deeply held values. And as I said, this one has been a hard one for me. Yet I would be running afoul of those very same values if I use my personal faith to deny services, especially health services, to those who reach different personal conclusions through their own faith. I cannot allow that to happen, and I will not. My final message today is for the young women and young people of New Jersey whom this legislation most directly touches. This is a victory, yes, but not necessarily a conclusion. The future will surely bring with it new attacks and reproductive freedom with which to grapple. I hope you will take this lesson to heart. Each generation must pick up where the last left off, advocating for the rights of others, even if it doesn't affect you directly and defending them. After all, we stand here today on the shoulders of heroes from prior generations, heroes like Estelle Griswold and Norma McCorvey. Under our state's laws, you folks, you in particular young folks, now have the statutory right to reproductive freedom, a guarantee that almost all previous generations lived without. It is your responsibility to ensure this right continues on to the next generation and I have complete faith that you will. Now it is my honor to introduce my partner in government, the extraordinary, the one, the only, Lieutenant Governor Sheila Y. Oliver. God bless you. God bless you. Awesome, awesome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, we could be no other place than Teaneck today. Be <laughs> Because, as Governor Murphy referenced, it is legislators in the 37th that steadfastly stood up for the past close to two decades advocating and making certain that reproductive freedom was the law of the land in the state of New Jersey. It took until we got a governor who you heard uh, looked at and examined internally his faith, and he also looked at the Constitution of the United States. And he looked at the history of women in this country. I met a woman right here in Bergen County who shared with me a couple decades ago she went to buy a car. She picked out what she wanted. She went to do the paperwork, and the agent said to her, okay, come back later with your husband. They wouldn't sell her a car because she was a woman. So we know the struggle that women have had standing up for what our constitutional rights are. I want to thank the legislature as well. I know this was a difficult kind of a journey for the members of the legislature. I want to thank Assemblywoman JC and Assemblywoman Veneri Huddle and to our new Senate president who has stood up to support this as well. About 20 years ago, I interviewed to be the director of NARAL in New Jersey. I made a decision to do something else. A couple of years later, I interviewed to be the director of Planned Parenthood of Greater New Brunswick. So I have seen this issue debated for 30 some odd years, 40 years, 50 years. The day in New Jersey is here. I could not be more pleased. And Governor Murphy, I hope that you are able to work with your governors from across the country, particularly in our blue states, to encourage them to also stand up for women's reproductive freedom. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila, as always, leading from the front. Bless you. Uh, I mentioned her several times, but we would not be here today without Loretta Weinberg. Please, everybody, let's get it up and welcome 
Senator Loretta Weinberg. You good? Okay, let me get myself. First of all, thank you for not making the dais too high. <laughs> I appreciate that. Usually they have to bring a stool along for... <laughs> See, now that's good staff work, Governor. <laughs> Always ready. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let me take a couple of moments first uh, to welcome the new Senate president, to the township of Teaneck. I hope you will get to know our town very well over the next couple of years of your tenure because it is a proud, wonderful, diverse community. So thank you for being here, which is kind of a statement on where the State Senate stands on women's reproductive rights. So thank you, Nick Scutari. To the First Lady, we are, although you're, you are dressed like Nanook of the North, <laughs> I am glad to see you out and about. Uh, so welcome back, and thankfully you came through because you were vaccinated. You came through very well, so thank you. To the Lieutenant Governor, you've been in Teaneck many, many times, and we are glad to see you here again on a happy occasion, on a day when the weather is really kind of shining on us, to our county supervisor, I still have trouble with, county commissioner, I'm sorry, thank you. I will remember to say that appropriately to Tracy Zur. And to all of the sponsors, to my co-prime sponsors in the Senate, Linda Greenstein, to us, uh, former Senate President Steve Sweeney, who is also a co-prime sponsor. Thank you for all your hard work, and thank you for keeping us on this road. To the Assembly sponsors, my partner in District 37 for many years, and so it's kind of very meaningful for us all to be here today, Valerie Venere Huddle, to her co-prime sponsors, Myla Jacy and Raj Mukherjik. Thank you all. Um, I, and I want to take another moment. Where is Kate McDonald? Come forward, please. Stop standing in the back row. Kate McDonald is a counsel, it's her counsel to the governor's office. Oh, okay. Just come up here a moment. Kate and I spoke too often, too much, over the 48 hours prior to this bill getting passed. She, and I sent a text to the governor upon passage. She is a real star. And we women in New Jersey are thankful that we're leaving this generation behind. So thank you, Kate. Thank you for everything. <clears throat> <laughs> you know, you have to know that this takes a lot of behind-the-scenes work. And to the Thrive Coalition, you know, without the advocates, without the advocates, without the advocacy, these things don't happen. You were all the things that advocates are supposed to be. You were annoying. <laughs> you were obnoxious from time to time. <laughs> You nagged us to the point where I was like, if they don't stop, I'm going to do an anti-choice piece of legislation. You did all the things that advocates should do. So thank you to the Thrive Coalition. And for a moment of personal privilege, to my sisters at the National Council of Jewish Women. <clears throat> you have been in the forefront of anything and everything that involves protecting women. 
in the state of New Jersey, and I am proud to be a life member of NCJW. I recommend that to my successors, and I'm so glad to see our District 37 team here. When we pulled up, uh, Gordon, even though he's the senator, I'm the former senator, he's still driving me, which we used to refer to as driving Miss Daisy. So I still had Senator Gordon Johnson chauffeuring me this morning. And when we were stopped by the police out there, I said, I'm Senator Weinberg, and then I said, oh, excuse me a minute, I am former Senator Weinberg. The driver is Senator Johnson. So they agreed to let us in past the uh, police barricade. So to all of you, thank you for indulging me as I went through naming the people who've made this possible today. Personally, this is kind of a culmination of a very long journey. And I will tell you, uh, Governor, you said something about, we hope, we, you said something about, you hope that you would get my input, or maybe I made that up. <laughs> so, when I said the other day, something about this was a long road, and I appreciated George Helmy, Chief of Staff to the Governor, keeping that road open for us, and I appreciated Kate McDonald driving the bus. I realized I was using a lot of New Jersey transit analogies. <laughs> so that was my subtle message to the Governor. <clears throat> yes, I will be acting as an advocate should. I will be annoying, nagging, and sometimes obnoxious, but I'll be there. So, Governor, the first bill that you signed as governor, I guess, almost five years ago, <clears throat> was the bill that gave seven and a half million dollars for women's access to reproductive care. <clears throat> And I want to just point that out on how important who the governor was. Because I had spent eight years introducing that bill each year, getting it passed each year, and then getting it vetoed by the then governor of the state of New Jersey. And if you multiply seven and a half million dollars by eight, you will figure out how women's health care was shortchanged during those years. So when a then new governor came into office, he chose that as the first bill that he signed. You set the stage and you have never failed us, Governor Murphy. Thank you very, very much. And thank you for being here in Teaneck, that municipal building there is where I started in elected office in 1990. So it's also nice for me to be here today. And let me just, I'm just going to read, I'm going to read something from the actual bill that's about to be signed into law. It's a short paragraph. And it says, the legislature is committed to ensuring that no barriers to reproductive freedom exist in the state. Individuals have the right to make their own decisions concerning reproduction, including the right to contraception, the right to terminate a pregnancy, and the right to carry a pregnancy to term without government interference or fear of prosecution. In a few moments, that paragraph will be law in the state of New Jersey. Thank you, Governor.
Loretta, thank you for those extraordinary words um, and for your extraordinary multi-decade leadership on this and so many other fronts. And I said to you privately, what you said about me touched me deeply and I will never forget it. Thank you and bless you. One more time, Loretta Weinberg. <laughs> Raj Mukherjee is uh, in the house. If I missed you earlier, I apologize. I spoke about you behind your back several times and it was all positive. I also want to build on something Loretta just said a few minutes ago about the First Lady. It is not true that we reinstated the, the, uh, the, the, the bear hunt and Tammy found and, and slayed a blue uh, furred bear. That is, that is a fake uh, item that she's wearing. Uh, I'm, here to, I'm here to give witness to that. I'll tell you, it's only a couple of days into his tenure, but uh, he's already off to an incredible start. And that's not surprising because he's been a senator for a long time. He's been the chair of the Judiciary Committee. He's a, a Union County uh, Democratic Party chair. He's an outstanding lawyer. So this, none of this should be a surprise. But I think it's really also important um, that, that Nick is here today because I think you make a statement, even if you don't say a word, and he is going to say a few words, you make a statement about where you choose to to show up and, and, uh, and, and be present. And, and so it is a great honor to introduce Senate President Nick Scutari. Thank you, Governor. What, it's really a pleasure to be here with the Governor who's been a steadfast uh, supporter of these issues. I do want to say to Senator Weinberg, and I, I spent eight years voting on those bills that the Governor, prior to Governor Murphy, vetoed. But when you consider the multiplier, for how much federal dollars and state dollars were lost on women's health care. Uh, it, it, it just never made any economic sense as far as I could tell. But just a few words. Uh, first of all, I'm still getting used to the title. Every time someone says Senate President or SP, I look behind me because Senator Sweeney is a pretty big, imposing guy. I figured he was right there. But uh, the last time I was up here, I, was, I had the pleasure of swearing in Tracy, sir, and a little bit warmer today. Thank you, Commissioner, for uh, ordering better weather. Uh, and I know that Senator Greenstein is here and uh, still in the caucus and uh, a big proponent as well as women's issues. Um, I, I, I got to tell you, I can't believe we're still discussing these issues. I remember when I was in law school that this was an issue and we're still discussing it today. That's why the fight is necessary that you have all engaged in. Uh, I have had the pleasure, and some people say displeasure, of living in another part of the country and uh, sometimes, and even in other parts of the state, people are not quite as enlightened on social issues as we are here in New Jersey, and that's a big benefit to us. Um, but uh, uh, friend in me on these issues, I always have been supportive of it. I, I always had an issue with, first of all, economically, it, it makes no sense uh, to be against women's issues. So you always have a supporter in me, and I know Raj Mukherjee, who's a real dynamic friend in the, in the assembly, works on these issues with me, done a great job in the last couple of weeks. But more importantly for me, I believe in these issues. So it was never, Senator Weinberg never had to ask me twice. Where she, she never had to ask me once. She knew where I was on, on these issues. So um, you're still going to have friends in the legislature, even though uh, people of the magnitude of Valerie uh, Huddle and, um, and Senator Weinberg leaving with Senator Greenstein and myself in the Senate, Roger McCurgy in the Assembly. But uh, it, it, it's really a momentous day today. I always, sometimes I, I'm surprised how necessary it is because I'm just so surprised that we're still new, doing this. But you've got friends from all over the state. From Union County, we have Denise Wilkerson, and, uh, and we have now New Jersey President, my good friend, Anjali Mahatra, big supporter of this. I can't get away from her without talking about these issues. Anjali, thank you for your steadfast support of this issue and of me as well. But uh, I, I'm really uh, here as a statement more than to belabor the point. You know where I stand on this issue, and if you need me, I'll be there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Uh, and, and again, wishing you great success in the years ahead. Um, and I, I echo something you said. The fact that we actually are still talking about this in, in our country, never mind New Jersey, is mind-blowing. You, you, you look, I mentioned Estelle Griswold, if you look at what she did on contraceptions <clears throat> and birth control and giving advice, I, I think I might have been one or two years old when that happened in Connecticut. I mean, it's just crazy, and, and, and I'm no spring chicken. So, Nick, thank you. Um, I, I mentioned this woman 
uh, on several occasions today. She had an extraordinary career in the legislature, and we would not literally be here today, as I said, first without Loretta, and secondly without this great representative. Please help me welcome former Assemblywoman Valerie Venary Huddle. God bless. God bless. God bless. I'd like to call up uh, my colleagues, Myla J.C. and Raj Mukherjee, if you would stand with me because they will uh, continue to be the progressive wing of the caucus. So, and I thank you. The thank yous have all been said, uh, but I do want to, of course, give another shout out to my mentor, Loretta Weinberg. And um, of course, to the governor and to the first lady and to Sheila. We've been there many times. I remember about 15 years ago in the dark, and I think it was Nick Scuteri's a colleague, Linda Stender, and I, we were allowed to speak at 2 a.m. in the morning on restoring family planning back in the day, so thank you. And another shout out to, I think I will always say, the woman that needs no introduction, Judy Persichelli. You have been a pillar of strength through these challenging times. And you may be known to get us through these challenges for COVID, but you've also fought very hard for the harm reduction bill, and I appreciate that, Judy. Um, I prepared a few notes on my own. I don't have staff. They were terminated December 31st, so this is me. Um, but today, women across the United States are being threatened as reproductive rights are in serious jeopardy. You know, over 20 states, 20 states, I think there's 26 now, are prepared to restrict access to reproductive care. You know, if you think about it, that's almost half of our United States. So the future of choice remains uncertain nationwide. And I always have to quote Hillary Clinton because she's been there through every challenge of women's rights and human rights. She said back in 1995, women's rights are human rights. We will not go back. None of us should accept a future in which our daughters and granddaughters have fewer rights than we do. So today the need for this bill signing is more urgent than ever. It will protect our residents of our states or our state from infringements on their reproductive rights regardless of what happens at the federal level. Because as we know, everyone deserves the ability to make their own personal health choices and we also know it will promote the health and well-being of the people in our state while showing the country and the world that New Jersey stands for compassion, dignity, and freedom. You know, I have to think about, and Loretta, we were there when we tried to get the celebration of Roe Ro v. Wade 40 years ago, and guess what the pushback was on the word celebration? We had to change that to commemoration, imagine that. So January 22nd will be the 49th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. And guess what? Let's celebrate it today in New Jersey. Thank you. And I, one more thing. I will say that I have many pens from Corazine Christie and Murphy, but this pen today, I'm humbled to accept. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. Thank you, Raj. It's a pen that I'm going to be honored to get to you. Dante, you're going to help me out with the pens. Do you mind? Not yet. I know. I know. Not yet. You still have the stool in case Loretta wants to come back for it? Thank you, Valerie, for being there year in and year out, day in and day out on this journey. I mentioned her earlier. It is a particular treat, uh, batting cleanup today, uh, to welcome back to New Jersey somebody who uh, leads on the entire reproductive freedom agenda and far beyond that, women's health more broadly, women's issues more broadly. Um, it is an honor to have her with us today. She is the president and CEO, I mentioned the Planned Parenthood Federation of America, but also of the Planned Parenthood Action Fund. Please help me welcome Alexis McGill Johnson. Thank you again so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. What's up, New Jersey? 
Thank you, Governor Murphy. Thank you for your really, truly inspiring leadership and words today. Um, they really are sitting with me and I, I appreciate the way in which you, um, you articulated um, uh, where you were and how you got to where you are today. Um, it was uh, incredibly meaningful. First Lady Tammy Murphy, we've had a couple times to connect by phone. I know you have been driving so many conversations, uh, probably at home and, uh, and throughout the state of New Jersey. So I'm, I'm so grateful for you. To the Planned Parenthood Action Fund of New Jersey. Thank you so much, my colleagues, Corey Newing and Roz, uh, Rogers. Um, I'm grateful for your leadership and the Thrive Coalition that helped get this done. It is such an honor to be in TNEC with you this morning, um, which has been represented clearly with distinction by uh, Senate Majority Leader uh, Loretta Weinberg for nearly 30 years. Senator Weinberg, we would not be here today without your tireless advocacy, and you make me incredibly proud to be a Jersey girl. Today is a bright day. It actually literally is a bright day in what has been an incredibly dark year for reproductive freedom. The Supreme Court seems poised to allow Mississippi's 15-week ban to stand. Potentially, they could overturn Roe oh, Ro altogether. <laughs> Should that happen, uh, 26 states could quickly move to ban abortion. 26 states affecting at least 36 million women of reproductive age and many more people who could become pregnant. Over the last four months, we have already seen the real world effects of abortion bans in Texas. Hundreds of people have traveled out of state to neighboring states like Oklahoma and New Mexico, and yes, even here in New Jersey. And those are just the people who can travel. We fear others are being forced into pregnancy and as always, these bans disproportionately impact people of color, trans and non-binary folks, and people with low incomes. There has never been a more urgent moment for our movement, and right now we need leaders to step up and unapologetically defend reproductive freedom. This bill is the answer to that call. The Freedom of Reproductive Choice Act is historic. It codifies the state's existing abortion rights into law. And with this legislation, New Jersey has taken an important step forward for reproductive freedom by ensuring that reproductive health decisions about birth control, about abortion and pregnancy are protected in state law. This did not, yes, this did not happen by chance. This is a result of more than a year of constant advocacy by the governor, legislative champions, and the Thrive New Jersey Coalition who have fought to ensure New Jersey met the moment and secured access to essential care uh, in its borders. Of course, we know our work is far from over. We know the opposition will not rest. We know they will continue to be vocal, but we are louder, we are stronger, and we have at minimum to be just as relentless, just as strategic, and just as loud as that vocal minority and lone voices that are out there right now. In this fight ahead, you can be clear, you can be certain that the Planned Parenthood Action Fund will stand with New Jersey, with our partners, because we know that we will ensure that abortion is not only a right, but that is it accessible for everyone and continue to fight regardless of people's immigration status, insurance coverage, or income. And today we are one step closer. So thank you so much, Governor Murphy. Back to you. As they say in show business, it's a wrap. I'm gonna sign this into law right now. You're gonna come to
think you want NJ Trenton. And I said, absolutely. <laughs> hey, Janine, I don't know I have a pen for you, but you deserve to be up here, Janine. Yes, where are you, Janine? Come on. Yeah. Uh, Janine LaRue. <laughs> So this is the first first up to bat is Senate Bill 49, codifies constitutional right to freedom of reproductive choice. As mentioned, sponsored by this woman, Loretta Weinberg, Linda Greenstein, Steve Sweeney, Vin Gopal, all in the Senate, Valerie Venary Huddle, Myla J.C. and Raj Mukherjee in the Assembly. Sheila, you up here? I'm here. First pen, <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver. <laughs> Once a senator, always a senator, the one and only Senator Loretta Weinberg. <laughs> Once an assemblywoman, always an assemblywoman. The once and future Assemblywoman, Valerie Venary Hunter. Senate President Nick Scuteri. Nick, you with me? Senator Linda Greenstein. Linda. Assemblywoman, Myla J.C. <laughs> and Assemblyman, Raj Mukherjee. Raj, Okay. I'm now going to switch gears, if it's okay with everybody. I'm going to go over to... Uh, the second bill, a double bill signing. You don't get this every day. This is Senate Bill uh, number 413, as I mentioned earlier, sponsored of the Senate by Shirley Turner, Teresa Ruiz, and in the Assembly by Valerie Venary Huddle, Myla J.C., and Raj Mukherjee. The synopsis expands requirements for health insurers and Medicaid program to cover prescriptions for contraceptives for up to 12 months. I know, right? First up to bat, Alexis McGill Johnson, President and CEO. Of I love that line. What's a Jersey Gale? Always a Jersey Gale. We heard from her earlier, Sarah Fajardo from ACLU. Sheila Reinerson from NJ um, Policy Perspectives. Caitlin Vokowitz, uh, where are you, Caitlin? <laughs> Nick mentioned her, uh, but here's for, here's to Angeli Marot Marotra, who's with us. <laughs> 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 As Loretta will uh, agree with me, richly deserved on, from my team, Kate McDonald. <laughs> That's great. Hey, Janine, you won the lottery here. Uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't think I'd have one. Janine LaRue. Thank you, Governor. So Thank much. you. Bless you, Janine. So let me just properly frame these. So.
These are now the wall below. <laughs> 